Today is the time to say goodbye to my very, very old project, which taught me a lot of what I know today about 3D printing and what can be done with it. I think I built this project around 2012, I'm not sure. It started as a uh, someone else project, which had never a chance to be completed for various reasons. From the original printer it started with, a few things remain the same. Uh, the motors with a uh, string drive system, effector, arms uh, are the same. Everything else was pretty much replaced. Let's walk through several features of this printer before it uh, goes away. Carriages are using a black Delrin sliders. Uh, pressure calibrated by that screw from both sides. Here we are, another one. Instead of rollers. That allows to achieve very, very nice and smooth movement. Another thing one may notice there are no part cooling fan on a uh, print head. That's because I use the CNC style nozzle uh, in which I had a uh, aquarium. Uh, tube which was plugged into the flow uh, uh, meter not actually meter uh, flow adjuster and was plugged directly into the workshop compressor allowing unbelievable results with uh, PLA then plastic would be literally frozen as it leaves uh, the nozzle here is the extruder it actually has a um, uh, planetary gears, metal ones, and uh, was able to push filament without any problems. If you look up there, this is a relay. This printer uh, have two power supply. One runs the printer itself, and second through the relay would uh, run the heated bed, which is right now looks pretty horrible. There was times when I uh, ran it with Raspberry Pi, and here it is. Electronics are quite primitive. Remember, it was done very, very long time ago. Everything has been cooled. Even uh, each uh, stepper motor had its own radiator. When one built a uh, 3D printer, there are three areas to pay as close attention as possible. And there are rigidity, geometry, and thermal balance. By the way, here is uh, Ender 3, just an example of size comparison. As I said, rigidity is absolutely paramount for uh, precision 3D printing, and that is absolutely solid. 3D printer is not standing on the bed. There are actually metal rods going through the uh, table's uh, surface, uh, through the uh, rubber washer, and through the uh, central center channel on, an, on extrusion on every corner. That makes it integral with the table. Those uh, bluish frame parts was actually printed on my very, very first 3D printer, which is Solidoodle, with print area of 4x4x4 four by four by four inches. That was very long time ago. There was a long travel from this to this. This uh, model represents one of the most difficult prints I have ever done. It combines organic and uh, man-made shape. And this printer was capable of printing virtually without any artifacts. Absolutely smooth, absolutely perfect printing. This model is a bit dusty, but still just shows 
possibilities of it. Look at those arrows. The last thing this printer uh, done was this model, development of this shape, which eventually became a fully patented product like this, made in this case on a CNC machine out of aluminum. If you're interested of what it is, you can go to compliancegrip.com to check it out for yourself. That's pretty cool. I just discovered it still powers up. Huh, tough old horse it is. And lights working in places. And the reason why this printer goes in the way of Dodo is. Well, I'm not trying to compensate for anything, but let's face it, it is a very big printer. Okay, this is the day number <clears throat> next of my use of any cubic predator. Um, not much happened since I started to use it yesterday. Um, I jammed the hot end, I had to completely rebuild it. I had to disassemble, reassemble extruder. Uh, my print bed wasn't working. I ripped twice uh, filament sensor. Yeah, uh, life the way it is. Uh, this printer, I got this printer as used one, and it was barely used. Let's look at this printer kind of stage by stage. Geometry, full metal, very good. I would give it 10 out of 10. Awesome. Rigidity. Uh, it's, it's awesome. It's very, very well built uh, printer. Uh, I would give 9 out of 10 only because um, I had to print those little clips and the Titan uh, rods together uh, because I think it's going to uh, improve uh, quality. Uh, hot end um, 6 out of 10. If you think that this is a cups of trimester, it isn't like seriously, it's cheap. It will work with uh, lower plastics, but well, if you get printer like that, make sure that um, Teflon tube uh, reaches all the way to the heat break. Otherwise, otherwise it's going to jam, even on uh, PLA or something. Extruder. 7 out of 10. The biggest problem is why do they decide to use a straight uh, grab screw instead of the concave and you cannot replace it. I mean, seriously, it's, it's not a good engineering uh, decision. But it works. Uh, tune up a pressure and it's going to function. Bed, I would say 10 out of 10. Although I did mention before that I struggled to make it work. Because the previous owners had children. And as a, uh, it turns out, crayons are not a uh, on the list of preferred adhesive for the 3D printing bed. But... Um, that can be easily fixed with a bit of acetone and as a propyl alcohol. Work like a charm. Cooling. Okay, that's negative 2 out of 10. This is an original shroud and it's blowing the air on the actual hot end and not on the part. That creates more problem than it solves. So, but again, it can be addressed fairly easy. Filament sensor. That time I will give 2 out of 10. Nothing wrong if you have a filament sensor on a uh, printer as big as this one. 
but location of it is absolutely idiotic. The filament catches on the um, wire, rip it out, happened to me twice, but again, it can be fixed. Question is, why do I have to fix it? But nonetheless, uh, bad leveling, nine out of 10. Uh, it does work and uh, it's very nice to have. Uh, the number of uh, points are not brilliant. Electronics, I would say 7 out of 10. They are working, although this particular touch screen is a bit iffy. Uh, my problem with, this, with those electronics are they are proprietary. A lot of things you cannot do, you cannot adjust. It's just in the world of uh, modern 3D printing, like keeping uh, proprietary electronics, that is bad move. Not sure why any Kubrick did it. Um, other considerations. It's printing right now, and it is incredibly quiet. Um, and never think you just absolutely have to know that uh, in the slicer settings, when you go to the end G code uh, text, make sure you comment out or totally remove M84 code. Uh, that's the one which disables the uh, motors because the moment this happened, uh, the uh, print head, which is still hot when you finish, uh, drops right on top of the model you printed. Kitty, get lost. Very simple ways to turn a good machine into the great one is actually very cheap, thinking about it. Uh, first, uh, disassemble the extruder. Make sure that Teflon tube goes all the way to the heat break. Um, and you can use majority of the plastics, just not the high temperature ones. Um, tension the rods. Print this uh, clips from Thingiverse, put springs, going to work uh, like a charm. Clean the bed. Get some acetone, isopropyl alcohol. It's a regular maintenance. but. Once you've done it, it really sticks very well. Um, 10 to 15 dollars will cost you a set of TL smoothers. I think it's quite important to have uh, and will uh, clean up your prints immensely from artifacts which are common for data printers. And the most importantly, remove the original shroud and put something better, such as I, I did. That was the very first thing this 3D printer did, is it printed its own new cooling shroud. So, 10 to $20, you're done, and your printer will deliver you great results. But what if you live in a imaginary world where uh, people have money? you can turn this machine into something absolutely amazing. It is a great base for what I'm trying to do is to experiment. First thing first, I would replace extruder, something like a bone tech with correct uh, hardware to grab the filament. Uh, then I would replace a hot end uh, to have a, a greater range of uh, uh, materials available. Uh, and less jamming issues, hopefully. Uh, cooling system have to be addressed uh, way beyond um, printing new shroud from uh, Thingiverse, bird, uh, uh, air pump, and the tubes would take a weight and gyroscopic uh, resistance from a, a print head, making your prints way better. I also would like to replace electronics uh, into something duet or something similar. It's not cheap. And uh, finally, those rollers are nice, but they can hear some noise. I would like to replace it to linear rods. Small changes will give you great machine. Full upgrade will turn this machine into a state of the art of a what it possible with current 
uh, FDM technologies today and would enable you to push the possibilities of 3D printing not only for prototyping, engineering, but art and uh, whatever you can imagine. So this is a great machine. I'm looking forward to experiment with it hopefully soon I would be able to show you what this machine is capable of. Thank you.